I want to welcome all my viewers from across the globe. Uh, this is Ifi's uh, Global Channel. My name is Ifi Onabo. Uh, I welcome all my viewers, uh, no matter where you're watching from. I say good evening to you. To my returning viewers, I welcome you. Uh, to those who are joining for the first time, who are viewing this channel for the first time, um, once again, this is Ifi's Global Channel. Uh, on this channel, we discuss African matters, issues that affect us as African people, uh, issues uh, that happen at home, and the issues that happen uh, here in the diaspora. Now, today we will um, we'll be discussing uh, this conflict in Ukraine. Um, I've done some videos uh, about this uh, in the last couple of days, but today I feel uh, we'll have to take a look at it from a different angle. I read a, a tweet by Rene Omokri, a Nigerian author, a lawyer, a pastor, and in that tweet, he is of the view that Africans should be neutral in this conflict. I want to say I agree with him. So this video, this very episode, will be discussing why African people, the African continent, African countries and African people should stay neutral in this conflict. Uh, first of all, it's important to understand the roots of this conflict. It is rooted in the rivalry between the West and the old Soviet Union. Now, the Russian Federation that emerged from uh, the ruins of the old Soviet Union is seen in the West as an embodiment of the old Soviet order. It doesn't matter that the present-day Russia has, a, a, I would say, discarded communism and they have embraced a, a free market economy. In other words, they've embraced capitalism as a way of life. It, it, it just doesn't matter because the West st still regards Russia with suspicion. Now, on the other hand, the Russians observe also with suspicion the unending expansion of NATO towards their border, and they see it as an, an, an attempt to encircle them and to weaken their country. And the long-term objective being to balkanize Russia and then to grab her resources. This is what is at, at stake here. Now, with global warming and the opening up of the, the sea routes in the uh, Arctic Circle and the thawing of the frozen lands of Siberia and the forest lands of, of Siberia, there, there are enormous riches and resources to be exploited in the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, Ukraine has become a pawn in this power game. Russia does not want NATO anywhere near her borders. Now, given her history and the propensity of foreign powers to attack them from the southern flank, they see NATO's presence in Ukraine as posing an existential threat. That's what I call it, existential threat. Now, the Westerners, on the other hand, they say that NATO is a defensive alliance. But let's look at it, folks. Events of the last three decades, especially since the fall of the Soviet Union, appears not to support this view. If we look at events that happened in Libya, events that happened in Iraq, in Syria, Afghanistan, these are examples. They do not support this view. So we have to be a little bit circumspect in what we, uh, 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 what we accept as truth. Now, my question is this. Why is it that our African social media warriors, I call them social media warriors, young people of Africa, they do not want to face Africa's problems? A number of them would say, as the scripture would say, I am of Paul, and the other one would say, I am of Apollos. Yeah? Some would say, oh, the, the West 
uh, I support the West. Putin is evil. Then the others will say, I support Putin. The West has an agenda. And now my question to you is, is Putin paying some lobos into your bank account? Is, are the Americans paying any money into your bank account? Those of us here in the diaspora, those of us who have to work uh, uh, two, three jobs, and who have to wake up in the dead of winter to go do one thing or the other, who is putting money into our account? Who is paying money into our account for supporting one party or the other? Now, I, we have to go back to history to understand a few things. Over the course of the uh, First World War and the Second World War, almost one million Africans, African soldiers, were recruited to fight alongside the British, the French, the Italian, and the Belgian colonies. That was Africa's contribution to the war efforts. You can do out, carry out your research because what I'm saying, these are, these are historical facts. I even learned that soldiers from South Africa, they were employed in military action. There were some Africans that, that fought in far away uh, Burma. They, 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 they used to call it Burma in those days. My question now is, who remembers them today? Nobody. So I am baffled also that some misguided folks in Nigeria, they have laid siege to the Ukrainian embassy and are asking to be allowed to travel to Ukraine to fight against the Russians. And then what did the Ukrainian ambassador do? He's asking them to pay $1,000 each. Have you ever heard that it's a soldier that pays for his own service? The scripture puts this puts it this way. How does a, a soldier be, how is a, a soldier expected to be to pay to be the one that is in charge of his keep? It doesn't happen that way. So I want to find I want to ask again how misguided can some of our folks be? And then when I was doing some research on, on this issue, I stumbled into a document, a paper uh, an article written by David Olusoga. Uh, David Olusoga is a, uh, a Nigerian historian who is based here in, 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 in the UK. He wrote an article which was published on the 11th of November 2018. And that article is titled, Black Soldiers Were Expendable Then Forgettable. I repeat it, Black Soldiers Were Expendable Then Forgettable. He was making reference to what happened in the First and the Second World War. Now, I want to say one thing. We understand that African countries were colonies then. They didn't have a right to make a decision as to how to deploy their resources. That's, that's fair. But now you, you guys are independent. You have to be able to uh, exercise your sovereignty and to make a decision to say we want to stay neutral in this thing because it's a regional conflict. Somebody, some people are trying to make it out as if it's a world war. It's not a world war. It's a regional conflict. Now, the, uh, the article written by uh, David Olusoga, I will, I will uh, uh, d d put a li the link uh, of that article. I will put it at the description uh, uh, box of this particular uh, video. Now, have you seen the events of the last few days? And have you bothered to ask yourself a few questions? One of those qu questions you should be asking yourself is, do African lives actually matter? That African people running away from danger of death, they do not receive the kind of help that they should, that, that they should receive. Does that not sound alarm bell? Does that not make that alarm bell ring in your ear? You want to tell me that after seeing those atrocities committed against your own people in Ukraine, you dare say you want to volunteer to go fight for them. 
it looks as if Africa has, hasn't got enough uh, problems. We do have problems, and I'd like to mention them. One is underdevelopment. Another is the issue of hunger. We have issue of illiteracy, infrastructural deficiency. We have unemployment of our youth. And then we have the issue of insecurity. That is the greatest challenge that Africa is facing now. So instead of going to fight in Ukraine, why don't you volunteer to go and fight against Boko Haram? Boko Haram is busy killing innocent citizens of Nigeria. The headsmen are ravaging that land, plundering everywhere. Why don't you volunteer to go and fight against Al-Shabaab that, that's not been defeated yet in East Africa? We have terrorists terrorizing the entire Sahel region of Africa. Why don't you volunteer to go and fight against them? Those of you who love to volunteer, we have pirates ravaging uh, the, the uh, uh, this Atlantic Ocean by the Gulf of Guinea. Why don't you volunteer to go and fight them? I want to ask, has Africa sorted out her problems? The answer is no. So I want to say that it is not a crime to be neutral. We can't be neutral. Neutrality is allowed. Switzerland is a country that has been neutral for ages. And because of their neutrality, because of her neutrality, I would say, she has continued to prosper in peace. So I want to urge African governments and I want to urge African people. I want to urge our people here in the diaspora, whether it's in the UK, in Europe, in America, in the Caribbean, I want to urge be neutral in this conflict. Africa has suffered enough. We suffered uh, from, from the days of slavery up to the days of uh, colonization. And right now, resources have been ex uh, our resources have been exploited and we, we, we don't seem to, 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 to be able to help ourselves in this matter. We have to face our business. And then uh, my people in Nigeria would say, why do you choose to ingest Panadol for another man's headache? Why? Once again, my name is Ife Onabo, and thank you for watching tonight. Um, I, will, I promise I will, I'll be making updates on this particular issue. And then uh, as, as soon as I get a, a few things ready, I will, I will upload them for your viewing. I want to thank you for viewing what we have done tonight. God bless. Bye.